So what we have here now are the elevation and plan of the full cone, okay, of the full cone. So the elevation and plan of the full cone. So again, just to recap, 200 millimeters from the top of the sheet and in 80 millimeters from the left-hand side to the center point here of the plan. The radius of the plan is 30 millimeters and the diameter is 60 millimeters. You draw your circle. Then you move 20 millimeters above the plan and draw in your XY line. You draw the vertical and horizontal to the center point here of the plan. You bring where the horizontal hits the circumference of the plan, bring both points up to the XY line bring the center point up to the XY line and straight on up and you measure up on that center line here 90 millimeters 90 millimeters and you simply connect the two outside points to the top to generate the cone on elevation now what we're going to do is we're going to impose a cut on the uh, elevation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up a vertical height distance of 30 millimeters. 30 millimeters. Okay. Now from on the right hand side what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, draw in a cut from that point there vertical height 30 millimeters up where it hits the right hand side of the cone here on elevation I'm going to draw in a line at 30 degrees and I'm going to put that cut in red now that is the cut imposed on elevation now first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the plan here and I'm going to, in the same way as before when I divided up the cylinder, I'm going to divide up this circumference into 12 equal segments. So again, using my 30, 60 degree set square, I simply, through the center point of the plan there, divide it into 12 equal segments. I'm going to proceed to put those in red, each of those lines. I have each of those marked onto the plan. Okay, 12 equal segments using 30 degree uh, set square, 30 degree set square, and then to 90 degrees and horizontal, the vertical and horizontal as well. So where they intersect with the circumference on plan, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to bring those points up to the elevation. So I've already got that point established there on the outside. Now I'm only going up to the base of the elevation, no further. Okay. Now where those points hit the XY line, I simply bring each of those points up to the top of the cone. Okay, and I'm going to put these in red again. Okay. I have my elevation, my plan. I've divided my plan up into 12 equal segments here. I've brought those points where those segments hit the circumference. I've brought them up to the base okay, of the elevation. 
and then I brought those points up to the top of the cone. The cut is imposed at 30 degrees at a vertical height on the right hand side of 30 millimeters, 30 degree cut. The next step is to develop the true shape of this cut surface. True shape of this cut surface. So what does that look like? First of all, I have to impose what that cut looks like on plan. So I've already established what these points are, what they look like with regards to the generators that are imposed here on plan as they go up to the base of the cone and up to the top of the, uh, the cone. Okay, so the cut is imposed here 30 degrees. And what I'm simply going to do is where the cut intersects with each of these generators, I'm going to bring them down to the corresponding generators on plan. But first of all, I'm going to index the points. Okay, so I'm going to start off, I'm going to start off this time with point one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and back to one. Okay. So, they are the different generators that go, are travelled up to the bottom of the elevation and up to the top of the cone. So where those generators are intersecting with this cut, I'm going to now bring them down onto the plan. Point 0.7 Point 0.8 Next one, point, points five and nine. Now, the second one I won't put in yet. Next one then is points three and eleven. Next ones, are, next points are two and twelve. And the next points are this point one here, point one. Here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to indicate these as a green line. Okay. So now for this center point here, which I haven't established, how you get that point is very simply you bring the point across to the side the side of the cone. So this point here I bring across. And then I bring down that point where it hits the side. I bring it down to its corresponding generator, which is point one there. So that point here. And now what I simply do is I either use a compass or a 45 degree set square. And I bring that point up. trace that as a grey line
Now, that gives me this point here and this point here on the center line. Now I'm just going to put those points in as hard points. So point one here, points two and twelve, here and here. Now, if I just before I, I, I put these points in further, I'm just going to relate these points to, to the points up here. So this is point 7 here. Then you've got point 6 and point 8. Then you've got points 5 and 9. Center you have 4 and 10. Then you have 3 and 11. Then you have 2 and 12. And the last point is point 1. Okay, so point 1 is here, point 2 and 12. Then you have points 3 and point 11. Then you have on this one, see where I brought the 45 and 45? After I brought it across here, the center point here, brought across to the side, brought it down to the plan here, corresponding generator and plan, and then brought up a 45 down to 45, and I get this point here, points 10 and 4. Then I have point 5 and point 9. I have point 6 and point 8. And then the last point here is point 7. Now, that does not give me the true shape if I connect these points, but it does show me how the cut imposes itself on the plan. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm simply going to draw in, or basically connect these points up, just very carefully, just to show how the cut imposes itself on the plan. Now, I've got the line in here by way of the, the imposition of the cut. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that in as a hard line. Okay, so now what we can see is we can see the imposition of this cut here, this cut, we can see the imposition of that on the plan. Okay, so now what we don't establish here with the imposition of the cut, this is not a true shape of this cut surface. That is now what we have to find out. What is the true shape of this cut surface here that's shown on plan? So how we do that again, we link two pieces of information. What we have here is the true length of the cut by way of 0.7, underline 0.71 here. Right, so 0.71 here, that, is the tr that, that there on, on elevation is the true length of this 0.7 to 1 here obviously on this, the, the cut on this line here, 7, 1. Okay, so with that information, the true length of that cut here, and then the true width on plan, we're going to bring those two pieces of information together in order to establish what the true shape of the cut surface is. Should be okay at that point, so I'm measuring away parallel line 80 millimeters from the cut 80 millimeters, and that's going to be the 0.71 line here, okay? So I'm going to now bring points, these points here, 0.7 down to 0.1 across at 90 degrees to the cut, which is a 60 degree return. Okay, so 0 0.7, 0 0.68, 0 0.59, 0 0.59, 0 0.10, 0 0.10, 3, 11, points 2, 12, points, point 1. Now, if I put this in red again, so the, again, point 1 to 7 is from this point here to this point here. 
So that red line now is a parallel line to the cut here. Now, I'm just going to use a grey marker again just to draw these lines in. So, points 1 and 7 are already established on this line. So that's point 1 and that is point 7 here. Okay. Now, if I want to, just before I proceed, just to indicate well, where, where, how that line is impacted. So, so I'm going to use a blue line here. So this line here, 1, 7, I'm going to simply put in as a center line. Okay. And again, on this here, indicate that there as a center line. Okay, now that probably is a bit clearer for you maybe to follow with regards to the line that I've just drawn. Now, I've already got now the true length here now established, points one to seven, which is on the cut here, on elevation. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish the width here, the true width of the plan. So, the, net, the first one up is points two and points 12. So point two, and point 12. I'm going to go to the correlating point here, this is point 212 here, so it goes each side here. Okay, the next one up is points 3 and 11. This point here. Establish each side here, three and eleven here. Next one is points four and ten. Ten here. Next one, eight point five, point nine and five there. And the next one is point six and eight. these in hard ink here so uh, so ink the points in hard points I should say now you can see here we've got point we're using the again the center line is a swivel so we've got the true length and the true width here and we're simply just swiveling this around so we can see the true shape so points one and points two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and point twelve. Now again all I simply do is connect those points, connect those points up carefully. And what this establishes is the true shape of the cut surface to the cone. The imposition of that 30 degree line on the cone, the elevation, what it looks like, what the true shape looks like of the cut. So I've drawn in there. Now what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to ink that in and I'm going to again I'm going to use black 
uh, just to distinguish it from the other lines. What we established here is the true shape of the cut surface. So this is the cut imposed on elevation, this is the cut imposed on plan, which is not a true shape. But what we've done is we've established, we've amalgamated two pieces of information, a true length line here of 0 0.7 to 1, okay, and the true width of the cut, and we've drawn that up here. Okay, so we simply flip this 7-1 line around to establish true widths on those points, and we've established the true shape of the cut surface. Now I'm just going to shade in the cut surface here. The next step is to draw in the development of the sides of the cone. Now in order for me to do this, I cannot pull the cone sides around here because it's going to basically encroach upon uh, part of possibly the, the development of the true shape of the cut surface here but also it may go beyond the sheet. So I'm just going to locate again an elevation down at this point here in order to pull it around uh, by way of the side development. 100 millimeters. Now, basically the when I'm unfolding this cone, okay, so what is the side? How do you unfold a cone? Well, you unfold it from the top of the the cone itself. So you get the radius of the side. So the length of the side there of one of the generators. And I'm going to do this with the compass. So from the top of the cone to the bottom here where it hits the XY line. So that side there. That is a true length. This line here, what I've established with the compass here, that is a true length of each of these generators. So from point one to the top of the cone here on plan that's a true length of this line here. All of these generators here, right, even on elevation, the red lines brought up, that is a true length here of each of those generators from point one here to the top of the cone. That's a true length because I'm looking at 90 degrees to this line here, one to the top of the cone, and that is a true length. Okay, so I'm moving across 100 millimeters on the XY line to this point here. And what I'm simply going to do is, with that radius of the side of the cone, I'm simply going to swing an arc. Now, um, for location a space on the sheet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this off at 60 degrees from this point here. So from that point there, where I've established 100 millimeter point here, top of the cone here, I'm going to draw a line at 60 degrees there. Now, again, I'm going to go to my plan. And where these generators have divided the plan into 12 equal segments, but on the base on the base here, from points 1 to point 12, I could take from point 1 to 2, any of those points, Right, okay, I'm going to draw in green here one of those points. Okay, so in my green pen, so from point one to two here, point one, point two, that width there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my compass now, get the width of this measurement. That measurement there now. Right, point one two. And I'm going to strike that off at the 60 degree line here. I'm going to strike that off on the circumference 12 times. 12 spaces. Okay. So again, I'm just going to indicate it here, all of those points. And 
and again I'm going to index them. So where I begin it. So so basically if I if I begin it at point one here, so point one, point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, back to point one. Now, I'm going to draw the development here just by way of the, the first line, the initial lines. I'm going to use uh, the red pen again. Okay, so point one, this point here. Now, I'll do this, I'm just going to bring in again four red lines. Points one all the way around to point one again here. Okay, now I'm going to draw in just the circumference here by way of the development circumference. I'm going to just draw that in as well uh, in red ink. As a development of the pre cut cone, this is the full cone, as a development of that full cone by way of the outside, this here is a development of this cone here. And I've established it by simply the base here. I've measured along one twelfth of that circumference line and I've stepped it off 12 times using the length here of one of the sides here, okay, as a radius. I've stepped it off 12 times and this here now unfolds the full cone. So what I have to establish now is how do, how do I establish where the cut intersects with all of these points. Well, I've got all of these generators on plan and on elevation. I have the cut intersecting them here on elevation. So what I have to do is I have to take these points across to the true length line here on the side and then bring them down here onto this development. Okay, so I'm going to again use a red pen to bring each of those points across. To the side. So seven, six, eight, five, nine, four, ten, three, eleven, two, twelve, and I've got point one there already. So again, I get my compass. And on the side here, from the top of the coat, I can start off at point, say seven here. So point seven, where point seven has been brought across to the side there, through a length line. I simply go down to my development here, and from the top here, I swing an arc around. I go down onto the side here again, and I go to the, my next point, which is 0 0.68, 0 0.68 there, get that length, and again, I swing that around. Go on to the next one, and the next point is going to be 0.59, established on the side here, go to the development here, swing that around. Then the next point is point four. So I've got point seven, point six eight, point five nine, and point four ten. Which you established. Next point then is point three eleven. Point three eleven. Next point, point two twelve. So 
swings that way. And the last point is sorry, 212 here. Last point is point one. Point seven, point six eight, point five nine, point four ten, point three eleven, point two twelve, and point one. Okay, now I'm going to correlate those points then, again using a black pen here with the points that I've just drawn around. So this is point one here, so point one and point one. Okay, next one up is points two and twelve, here and here. Next one up is point three and eleven here and here. Next one up is point 4 and 10, here and here. Next one up is points 3, sorry, uh, points uh, 5 and 9, here and here. Next one up is point 6 and 8, here and here. And the last one is point seven. So you can see here how these points now obviously interact with all of the generators, okay, the correlating generators, and I will simply connect these points up now, I establish the true shape of the cut sides, okay? So I simply connect these points together. Okay, now I'm going to draw this in as a, again as a black line using a French curve. Okay, so this is the true shape of the side of the cone developed. Okay, so again, uh, I'm going to just shade in what is the cut sides, a cut side of the cone. So just to recap then, what I have drawn in here is the elevation and the plan of a cone, okay? The cone is cut at 30 degrees. Now the imposition of that cut on plan is established by simply obviously drawing through the center point of the plan here using a 30-60 degree set square and dividing the plan into 12 equal segments using, as I say, a 60 and 30 degree set square to divide into 12. You bring up those points where those points hit the outside of the plan here. You bring them up to the base of the elevation and then bring them up to the top of the cone. Where they intersect with the cut here, those generators intersect with the cut, you bring them down to the corresponding generators on plan and establish your points for the cut on plan. In order to establish then the true shape of this cut, what you use is two, are two pieces of information. So the true length of, on the center line here, okay, the, from seven to one is the true length. Okay, so using that as a piece of information, the true length line of the cut here, seven to one, with the true widths on plan. And you then simply draw a parallel line to the cut here. This is drawn 80 millimeters across from the cut on elevation. The center line is replicated here, this center line on plan. Okay, the 7 1 line. Okay, and you simply bring these points across at 90 degrees to the cut and establish these points on this line here. 
And then what you do is on this from the plan you get the true width here on the plan again from the center line and you swing each side of that center line to establish all the different points. So 212, 311, 710, 59, 6, 8. And you've already got 7 and 1 on the center line. You simply connect those points up and you establish the true shape of the cut surface. Okay, on posed, on, imposed on the, on the elevation here and seen on plan. Then to develop the, the shape, the, the, the imposition of the cut on the sides as a development. Okay, we could do it from the elevation, but it's going to interfere here with the, uh, the true shape of the cut surface, and it might even go beyond the sheet. So what I did, I established uh, the development 100 millimeters from the right hand side of the cone here on elevation across. And I drew a line at 60 degrees here. Then I got a, a compass and I got this as a radius to side and I simply using this as a spring point from this point here I swung an arc. I then went down to the plan and got the measurement between one of the, the 1 12 so 1 to 2 as a measurement 1 12 of the circumference and I stepped this off 12 times. I connect each point back to the springing point and this gives me a full development of the cone before it's now. What I then had to do was I had to establish how the cut imposes itself on the different sides. So what I did was where all of these points on the cut okay, in, in, intersected with all the generators on the elevation, I simply brought across to this side here, which is a true length line of each of these generators. The side here is a true length of each of these generators. So where each of these points in the cut cuts the generators on the elevation, I brought across to the side and then using this again the same springing point and a radius I took each of those points and I swung arcs from the springing point here around okay and then I simply correlate the points so you've got point 7 right point 7 here is a radius and where it correlates with point 7 here as a generator point 6 and 8 points uh, 5 and 9 points 4 and 10 points 3 and 11 okay and then points 2 and 12 and 1 and 1 at the same point okay they pull around onto each other so this then is a true shape this is a true shape of cut side of cone and this here is a true shape of cut surface I hope you found that video useful. Thank you very much.